Welcome to the Spectra Creative Channel, where we talk about action figure toy lines, which are a lot like a roller coaster. I mean, they are made of metal, and usually you want to throw up afterwards. And Well, okay, how about this? They're like a roller coaster because they have really big highs and really big lows. Why would someone want to participate in a hobby that's always making them feel really good or really bad? Well, who knows? But, you know, a, a, a high, like finding out a new characters coming to a toy line you collect and a scale you collect and you're excited to finally get this figure and then the low of realizing that you have to go to retailer after retailer after retailer looking for it only to find out that it never even shipped in the window it was advertised to. All right, I digress. So one of the things that can be disappointing in collecting toys is when things don't match. What I mean by that is when what's in the package or what's shown on the package isn't quite what you're getting. And I'm not talking about, you know, bootleg toys where Superman and Batman are also sold alongside Wolverine, Iron Man, and wow, they included Green Lantern in this? All right, hey, why not? No, I'm talking more about when you see a toy at retail and looking at the cross-sell, the photograph of the toy is not what's in the package which seems really weird. I mean, shouldn't the, the, the actual image of the toy on the back of its own product look like the toy you're getting? Well, there's interesting reasons for that. What I'm showing here is Muckman's little assistant there that on the back of the package, uh, Joe Eyeball, did I remember the name right? Oh, I did. Um, did that from memory. Uh, yeah, the actual toy, no, no deco, not so much, as the photo of the same said toy is on back of said package. Did that make sense? I hope it did. So yeah, even though you could see him in the package, I mean, it's not like the blister is hiding anything, so you can't really say false, you know, advertising, because you can see it, but it doesn't match the photograph of itself on the back. And why is that? I mean, it makes no logical sense, right? I mean, that's the actual object. So why on the back of the package does it look better than the one that they're actually offering you? Well, there is a reason for this. And I'm using Ninja Turtle figures as an example because it's honestly one that I remember personally being very frustrated with as a child. I remember getting Wingnut and Screwloose, and Screwloose was just a piece of orange plastic. It's one of the reasons I think the NECA figures are really cool, because they're doing the sidekicks as fully articulated, fully decoed characters. It's kind of like what we would have done if we did Ninja Turtles at Mattel under Classics, but that's not something that would happen. It's perfect that it's under NECA. That's why you have multiple toy companies. I'm totally getting sidetracked. Okay, Screw Loose and Wingnut, yes, they were very odd figures, but you had to uh, accept them as, well at least screw loose, as an accessory, an unpainted accessory, despite the packaging showing otherwise. All right, so enough of using Ninja Turtles as examples, but let's actually just look at them as an example when you're talking about a cross-sell. So, regardless of which figure it is and which line, whether it's a vintage line that came out in the 1980s or, to keep with the same brand, a line of new figures coming out today. Here's NECA's remakes. So, why is it that we still see this continuing today? The photos don't match the product. It's all about margin, is what it really comes back to. And for those who uh, haven't spent years doing business profit and loss statement reviews, margin is basically the difference between what it costs to make a product and what you sell a product for. Simple as that. I mean, not well, that's you know, brought down to the base level. And that difference between, you know, your cost and then what you sell it for, that's your profit. That's your, it's your margin, more or less, is a fancy way of putting it. And when large companies that are publicly owned have goals for all products, and one of those tends to be what are called margin requirements, hence why I'm basing this around first explaining what a margin is. So margin requirements are broken up into things like what the selling price needs to be, the, what the pro target profit has to be, what the target cost to produce the figure needs to be. So let me explain in action figure terms. So let's say you have a figure like this that people want. Oh, I don't know what kind of people. People like, so say me. Well, let's say this figure costs $20. I know they cost like $22 now, but let's say $20. Well, the product should cost about 25% of what you're buying it for to make. Meaning if you're buying something for $20, whatever it is, action figure, fruit, it should cost the company $5 to make that figure. And that includes the cost of actually 
producing it, paying for it to get made, the labor, the raw materials that have to go into it, the paint that has to go into it to paint the raw materials, as well as a royalty fee, because you don't may not own the characters and have to pay to use them. I mean, someone needs to own the characters. Oh, won't somebody please think of the children? Okay, totally getting sidetracked. You also have to pay for your overhead expenses, which means salaries. Uh, it means the cost of operating a building, the, the cost of feeding a giant Mr. Potato Head monster every week. So all of that has to be incorporated in that $5 cost, as well as the cost to tool the product if it's never been tooled before, if it's not just like a reissue or a repaint. So that one-time sunk cost also has to be covered by the cost of goods, the cost to produce it. So there's a difference between the true cost of the product and what you can actually sell it for. All right, so let me kind of very briefly explain that. All toy lines start with big plans. You want to load that figure up with tons of deco, tons of accessories, and then there's realistic plans. So you may want to have a figure come with extra heads and all this deco, but because of the target cost that the company has issued for all product, you can't do that. That's why characters like Necron lost his weapon. Costs often have to get cut. Products have to get what's called cost reduced in order to meet those company issued mandates of product costs. And the broken timeline is that these costs hit after you've seen the product. So when you've seen product at shows, for example, you know, Comic Con, New York Toy Fair, back when we used to have these conventions, you may think you're seeing action figures, and sometimes you are, but sometimes, like with these images here, you're not seeing an action figure. It's actually a prototype that's a statue that looks like an action figure. How do you know this isn't an action figure being shown off? Well, there's no joints, there's no pegs, there's no swivels. You can see it looks like there should be joints, you can see where the joints should be, but it's not actually articulated. Versus if you look at the final product, you can clearly see it's made up of multiple pieces of plastic held together by joints. And, uh, well, T-squares are a type of joint. But, yeah, you can see the pegs. You could see, uh, you know, where the joints are in this figure. So you can tell this is final product. What you're seeing at a convention is usually the prototype, the sculpt, that is being held together by pins to look like an action figure. So this is because we're early in the process. It's what I meant by the broken timeline. So the pins that you can see here that are holding the figure together don't allow it to articulate. So you can't pose this figure. It's just there to look at or to photograph because it's what's called a looks-like model. It doesn't function like a toy, but it looks like a toy. And where it falls along the production cycle is essentially that when the toy needs to get photographed for the cross-sell is very early in the process. So the only thing available is the early prototype, which may not reflect the final price. It may not have been cost-reduced yet. So that's why the photograph reflects a toy pre-cost reduction to meet the required selling price that a publicly held company is going to set for all its products, for all industries. And even though when you buy Muckman and Joe Eyeball, you can see him in the package, know that it wasn't this final product, but only the prototype that was available for the photo session for the cross-sell on the back. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please do share it with others. Let me know if I've answered your questions or if there's more info needed. Let me know in the comments section. I always try to write back. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.